Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Tips and Tricks for Guts and Black Powder Classes. Now, I have a question for you before this video starts. Have you ever been watching other Tips and Tricks videos, and they say the same things over and over? Well don't worry, because I, today, will go into deep ta detail and explain tips that not even certain veterans may know about, and how to play the classes the most efficiently. Keep in mind that as I am recording this video, the game's version is in version 0.10.10a, and things will most likely be subject to change, and this video will possibly become outdated if new things arise. Anyway, on to the first tip. So first things first, it is imperative that we set some ground rules for this class. Know your place. As a surgeon, you should be more focused on healing your teammates and fighting along in the front when you are low on supplies. Or, if nobody on your team currently needs healing, it is imperative that you fight. And if you don't, you will most likely have no supplies to use on your teammates later. Surgeons are close rank fighters who lack any ranged weapons, so remember to be careful when fighting and to stay vigilant for when your teammates really need you. Moving on to tip number two. This tip will be talking about when to heal your teammates. This may seem like a weird point to bring up at first, but I assure you this is most likely the most important tip you will learn from this video. The rule of thumb for a good surgeon is if they can be killed by a zapper in one hit, they need healing. This especially applies if you are playing hardcore mode since zappers deal extra damage compared to normal mode. The reason this is so important of a rule is because some surgeons that I personally have seen play will be reluctant to heal people who are sitting at around half HP. Those people typically will have a higher chance to die to a zapper than seeing as they are able to be killed by them in one hit. The, o the other point I was to bring up is if your team is fighting and there's no clear place to heal someone without a zombie interrupting you, it's most likely better to just fight and clear a place to heal your allies in. Trust me when I say this, this tip is extremely crucial and you will need to understand when it is a good time to heal your teammates. Now onto the next section of tips for this video. I'm going to go over the full animation process for the healing animation. This will properly explain how each individual step of the healing animation works, since they all have their own unique function, technically. So, first, you give them a bandage. Then, you put a little tourniquet on their arm and twist it in. And then, you stitch their face up four times. This is the entirety of the healing animation process. So, now I'm going to individually explain how each part works since they all have their own unique mechanic. So, first, the bandage. The bandage is very simple. The moment you see that your supplies at the bottom right slightly go down, it means you've successfully given them the bandage and their HP will gradually go up just a little bit. Now. I'm going to explain how the tourniquet works. The tourniquet has uh, some pretty unique functions and I'm going to have to explain over it quite a bit, especially since one part of the tourniquet I only just figured out while trying to make this video actually. So you give them the bandage like usual, then the tourniquet, the moment you put it, the tourniquet in their arm, it is a one time heal and after that animation right there closes, right after like they look at their arm and brush it off you get another heal there. So you get one heal from there, one one one-time heal from the tourniquet, and then another heal right as they brush or like look at their arm. And I'll even prove this to you that the tourniquet itself is a one-time heal. So, first, let me get more supplies. And now, as you'll see, I will give them a bandage. And then I will put the tourniquet in their arm. This tourniquet is a one heal per life use. As you can see, he's not being healed any more than the bandage. But the healing uh, after they look at their arm still applies. As you can see in just a moment here. As 
as you can see, in just a moment, you will see that it will heal him even more. So, when he looks at his arm, brushes it off, you will kind of see a little spike in the healing, and it's going up a little bit faster than usual. It shows that both the bandage and the after animation of the tourniquet are both healing him. This is a feature of the tourniquet I did not know about for a long time, considering I have 200 hours. What is he doing? Alright, and now onto the last process of the healing animation, which is quite easy. It's the stitches. So, you of course give them the bandage, and then you put the tourniquet in the arm for a one-time heal. And then the after animation heals them. And then you stitch their face up one, two, three, four times, each healing the player a pretty good amount. Now, the only time you would ever really need to do four stitches is if someone has a tourniquet in their arm and uh, they are basically on the verge of death, as in, like, roughly around this HP. But even then, considering that you have an after heal from the tourniquet animation, you really only need to do two stitches, and I will show that off really quick. So you give them the bandage. You put the one-time heal in their arm, but this is counting that uh, the tourniquet's already been in their arm, so you get the after heal from that. And then, one, two. This should leave them at full HP, according to how it works. It takes some time. So... It is technically like 99 HP, but technically that is pretty much full HP. So I would consider that pretty much a full heal. You can do one extra stitch if you just want to fully make sure that they are max HP. Nothing wrong with that. And another thing is when after you do certain animations, your supplies will go down. I talked about this with the bandage, so you lose supplies right there for the bandage. You don't lose it yet for the tourniquet, but you actually lose it right here as well. And I also didn't know this, notice this for a while, but you also lose a bit of supplies for the after animation of the tourniquet. So you lose it during the bandage, the after animation of the tourniquet, and then you lose it for once you start stitching their face up. Now, one last tip I want to point out that is good for one-time heals and quick heals which i'll explain right now is if you are in a pinch and you just need to quickly give someone a good heal but have no time give them the bandage and the moment you hear the squeaking sound instantly jump and uh pause the animation this will not get them to uh, max HP, most likely, but it will definitely get them to roughly around 75% HP, which will allow them to survive one zapper hit, which is very crucial. However, in hardcore, this, this amount of HP probably will not slide, and a zapper will most likely kill you, so you do need to watch out for that. All you need to know and take away from this section is heal accordingly, know the parts of that healing animation that do heal and don't heal and yeah let's move on to our next tip then moving on to our next part that will be fairly short and quick the box of bandages with the surgeon you not only get access to medical supplies but also a one-time use item where you place down a box of bandages for any of your teammates to come take from you have to have max supplies to put one down, however, and each box has seven bandages in them. From what I've seen to test, they heal about 25% of your HP from what I can estimate. This is different if you are in endless mode, however, since every three waves you will recover your box of bandages. Moving on to the next tip that will probably be very crucial for surgeons is combat strategies and how to manage your supplies. When you're playing Surgeon, you will constantly run into the issue of being low on supplies. Since every time you heal that one person who gets down to red HP from meleeing bombers, you are left dry of supplies constantly. 
the best thing to do to get the most supplies from zombies is just to ensure that you get the final blow. From what I've tested, as long as the surgeon is the one to get the last hit on a zombie, that zombie will then have a chance to drop supplies. The most effective strategy is to hide behind a sapper's barricade and jump and slash to deal double damage, which will most likely kill a lot of zombies. This will definitely rack up your supplies and hopefully be enough for that one poor guy you keep running into. This next section of tips contains notes that are useful but are small and don't really deserve their own category. So I compiled them all here and I'm going to list them off one by one. First of all, when you ask someone to heal, you can then quickly switch to your saber. This allows you to swing your sword while you are in the healing animation, providing a minor defense if a zombie comes up. The downside of this is that most zombies will tend to just try to grab the person you're healing instead, so it doesn't really do much usually, but it's still there if you need to do it. Another thing that not many people may know about is that the stitches animation bypassed the burned status effect. So if your ally is under 50% HP and you can give them stitches, it's best to do so. The last tip that I compiled is that this is just my personal preference, but when I'm playing Surgeon, I tend to bring the water bucket instead of grenades. My reasoning being, if you're going to be a support class, it's best to put out fire so you won't have to deal with more burned people as much, and it also helps protect sapper structures which will help you get more supplies in turn. So now, let's go everything that we've learned. Number one, you can jump during the healing animation early and save time. Two, you should fight up front to get supplies when you are not needed to heal people, and it is crucial to pay attention to your allies' HP. All in all, the Surgeon is probably one of the most important classes in the game alongside the Sapper and the Priest. I hope this video helped you better understand how the Surgeon works and how to play them more efficiently. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and make sure to ask questions or other tips I forgot to point out in the Surgeon class in the comments. Thank you for watching.